Hello, I'm Dr. Yidoki from Asan Medical Center, Department of Radiology. Today, I have to talk about something unusual. Unusual cerebral aneurysms and their diagnosis and treatment. My talk will cover a long list of unusual cerebral aneurysms one by one after defining what is usual and what is unusual. We define a cerebral aneurysm as any focal bulging or protrusion of the cerebral atria wall. If we define a barrier aneurysm at or near the sacral willis at the branching site of the subarachnoid arteries as a usual aneurysm, then we can define an aneurysm unusual when the lesion is different from those lesions in terms of aneurysm morphology etiology or clinical behavior. For example, a large or giant secular aneurysm can be unusual if the aneurysmal wall has a secondary change such as mural thickening or thrombosis. I think recent advent of high-resolution vessel wall MR imaging can be useful to evaluate those changes. An extreme type is a serpentine aneurysm. The mechanism of this stunning lesion is identical to the mechanism of a meandering river creation. As you can see here in this case, the aneurysm is full of thrombus, leaving just a narrow path for the residual flow. See the DSA pattern. The residual lumen of the giant aneurysm sac will serve as the conduit for the peripheral MCA cortical branches. We could resect the huge mass after a bypass surgery. Management of these lesions could be challenging, especially due to the high chance of aneurysm recurrence. Another extreme of the unusual aneurysm is the microaneurysm. The patient presented with SAH in this case, subsequent CTA failed to show any culprit lesion. DSA was also negative. However, a careful image reconstruction of the 3D angiography, we could find a very tiny aneurysm at the dorsal aspect of the basilar trunk. It turned out to be a microaneurysm at the origin of one of the median brainstem perforators. A recent systematic review reported a relatively good clinical outcome for those cases even after the hemorrhagic episodes. That must be a good news for the patient because these lesions are very difficult to treat locally. When it comes to the etiologic aspect of the unusual aneurysms, we can have a long list of them, from the dissecting aneurysm to the myxomatous aneurysm. Let's review one by one briefly. Aneurysms related to atrial dissection. The most common location is the intracranial segment of the distal vertebral artery, followed by intradural distal ICA or MCA, ACA A2 segment, and the PCA P12 segment junction, and so on. Diagnosis of the dissecting aneurysm is rather straightforward with its common association with the headaches and the unique imaging findings. Management of the dissecting aneurysm could be strategic, since its natural history could be diverse. Lesions with a benign presentation can be observed without any intervention. However, imaging follow-ups are essential since they may show rapid morphological change. For example, in this patient presented with posterior neck pain, showed segmental distension of the right distal vertebral artery and the focal stenosis in the opposite segment of the vertebral artery. 
one month follow-up MRA and the three months follow-up CTA are also showing rapidly changing morphology, as you can see here. Please note focal aneurysm formation at the dissected distal vertebral artery segment on the 3D angiography. We underwent stent assisted coiling like this. When the dissecting lesion is presented with ischemic symptoms, then stenting can be done not only for the perfusion improvement, but also for the facilitation of the dissecting lesion stabilization. Various types of stent can be used with or without combined coiling of the aneurysm sac. The clinical consequence of a dissecting aneurysm presented with a subarachnoid hemorrhage is usually quite ominous. Early intervention is essential for the prevention of re-bleeding, which is quite common in untreated cases. Trapping of the dissected segment is the most secure treatment except for this kind of a complicated situation. Sometimes the treatment decision can be complex, as you can see in this case. The patient was presented with a sudden weakness, and his initial CT scan looked like this. A thrombotic mass here. Subsequent DSA was performed, showing faint feeling of the dilated proximal PCA and the occlusion of the peripheral branches. This is a DWI and the GRE. We are pondering whether we should do something for this patient or not. While we were discussing the management plan, unfortunately, the lesion ruptured. We trapped the PCA right away like this. As in this case, a dissecting lesion can be ruptured, even in the case of ischemic presentation. Infective aneurysms, also known as mycotic aneurysms, are another important condition. It is a consequence of either local or remote infective arthritis. They could be presented with either ischemic or hemorrhagic. Of course, medical treatment, especially a sufficient duration and appropriate antibiotic regimen, is the prerequisite before endovascular treatment. Since those lesions are formed as a consequence of the fragility of the infected arterial segment, trapping of the segment, including the aneurysm, could be the most secure treatment. This is a case of a cavernous segment ICA aneurysm secondary to the cavernous sinus thrombophlebitis initial MR and MRA. DSA and the 3D angiography showed segmental irregularity here with an obvious aneurysm, which is quite irregular. We put the patient on CTA follow after a full antibiotic regimen. This is after one month and this is after three months. One year follow. Eventually, we underwent a stent-assisted coiling. Then, how about this case? A man in his 40s underwent brain imaging as a routine worker for his recently diagnosed infective endocarditis. There are multiple variable-sized cortical or subcortical dark spots like this. Please note the small amount of cell called SAH here suggesting tiny peripheral aneurysms with and without local hemorrhage. Subsequent DSA showed multifocal, segmental, irregular stenoclusive lesions and a small amount of irregular margin the peripheral aneurysms. The PCA aneurysm here looked very prominent. Then, we underwent glue embolization of the small peripheral aneurysms like this. This is a typical case of subclinical presentation of ruptured mycotic aneurysms. Not to mention, careful brain imaging should be done 
in patients with infective endocarditis, even without any neurologic symptoms. Flow-related aneurysms are literally aneurysms formed in the atrial region with abnormal flow stress. It is commonly seen along the atrial feeders of the brain AVM. When it comes to treatment of those lesions, we can defer individual aneurysm treatment since some of those lesions could be reversible after successful eradication of the high-flow lesion. If we cannot control the high-flow lesion effectively, then targeted individual aneurysm treatment can be done. The aneurysm is in the dysplastic atrial segment of the intracranial artery. Not infrequently, a certain segment of the cerebral artery can show an unusual shape. When you look into the lesions closely, you can note that the primary problem is excessive elongation of the involved segment, that is, atrial dolicosis. Sometimes the dolicosis can be combined with a focal stenosis or dilatation. The stenotic segments are vulnerable to atherosclerotic changes, including wall calcification. The dilated segments can eventually end up with ugly-looking aneurysms. We report our experience with those lesions a couple of years ago. We could observe diverse wall changes associated with the dysplasia. Another unique condition is large secular or fusiform ICA aneurysms like this. Different from the usual secular very aneurysms, these lesions typically occur in the dolicoectatic tortuous dilated arteries. In a way, the lesion is quite similar to the triple A's in the aorta. The lesion used to be managed with the trapping of the parent artery, however, a reconstructive treatment has become possible due to the recent advent of flow diversion therapy. Similar lesions can also be seen in the dolicoectatic vertebral basilar system due to the underlying medial degeneration as the main pathology. This is a typical presentation of such a case. The patient was presented with a sudden brainstem infarction showing prepontine mass and uh, several foci of brainstem and cerebellar infarcts. The CTA showed marked doliquectasia of the vertebral vesicular system and a fugiform aneurysm in the middle. We thought that these symptoms were related to the mass effect and the combined mural thrombosis. We may try flow diversion here too. However, the risk of further branch occlusion is known to be very high. The patient declined the option and uh, unfortunately, the lesion was markedly aggravated at one ear follow-up, leaving no further treatment option. Since management of these lesions is very challenging, only management could be the best option as of now. There is a term, atherosclerotic aneurysm. This could be a misleading term because associated atherosclerotic changes are quite common even in usual secular aneurysms. As you can see in this MCA aneurysm, while the small aneurysm here shows a typical bright red wall, the larger one shows a thicker wall with a yellowish atheroma and calcification. This is not an atherosclerotic aneurysm, but an aneurysm with secondary atherosclerotic changes, which is quite common with the usual secular aneurysms. I think this is a typical case of atherosclerotic aneurysm, underlying atherosclerotic lesion with uh, aneurysms like this. Some of the lesions cannot be differentiated from the ulcerative plaques. 
You may check out the Karspik plugs on dual display of the 3D angiography like this. I put mixed metals aneurysms as the last item on my unusual aneurysm list. The lesions are kind of metastatic lesions from the cardiac myxoma. Actually, they are usually found months or even years after heart surgery for the myxoma. It has a unique hyaline-like myxomatose wall on its growth surgical findings. Let me share a typical case with you. This patient was initially presented with a TIA and another TIA the next year. Eventually, the LA myxoma was found in his ischemic stroke workup and resected successfully. However, he presented back with headaches after six months after the surgery. Check out multiple collisions on MR imaging. We did the DSA, right ICA gram. Could you pinpoint the unusual findings? Yes, here and here. Left ICA gram, here and also here. We did the gamma knife radio surgery. Check out the reduction of the cortical edema here on this one year follow up imaging. However, he presented with new headaches again, this time also with multiple new lesions. C. Segmental, regular dilatations here and here. DSA revealed the full blown myxomatous aneurysma lesions. The 3D angiogram showed ill-defined but segmental regular dilatation of the middle segment of the cortical arteries. Anyway, we did multiple craniotomies and the coilings during the last 15 years for him. Skull views. Actually, the patient is clinically stable, even though his latest angiography shows much larger, multi-segmental, marked lesions like this. You may not disagree that this histologically benign but clinically relentless condition should be at the top of the unusual aneurysm list. With this, I presented several impressive and unusual aneurysms. And of course, there are more lesions that need to be mentioned since a cerebral aneurysm can be unusual in terms of its morphology, etiology, and the clinical behavior in various ways. Although those lesions are not common, we as radiologists should be accustomed to their unusuality since those lesions can mimic other non-vascular conditions on imaging. With this, I'd like to conclude my talk. Thank you.